All right. So uh, today we are talking about one of the one of the bigger things that goes on in the midst of the revolution. Everything that we've talked up uh, talked about up till now has really been the lead up to the revolution. Why we were declaring independence, uh, how we felt like uh, justice had uh, had not been done. But today we're really talking about one of the major battles of the revolution, really one of the more important battles in all of American history. So let's go ahead and get started with the Battle of Saratoga. Battle of Saratoga uh, is in the midst of the revolution, and let me tell you, things are not going well. Uh, the, the entire revolution hangs by a thread. We are so severely disadvantaged. We're outnumbered. We're poorly trained. We're in desperate need of supplies. Uh, I mean, we are fighting the largest war machine on the globe at this time. And, uh, and so we're struggling with unity. We're struggling with all these different kinds of things. Uh, we know from previous videos, right, about loyalists, that one third of the population isn't even supportive of, uh, of independence, and therefore many are acting as spies and passing uh, information along. <coughs> so that's what we're, we're looking at. We are in desperate need of a win, uh, and, and it does not look good for us. This, uh, this revolution is, for all intents and purposes, it's close to being over, and it's not going our way. So the British are really looking at how do we end this thing very quickly? And they think Saratoga. Saratoga is the place. They're going to try to converge all of their troops on our much smaller force. They feel like because they have us outnumbered in terms of numbers of total army, and each army that they have is larger than any of our armies, that if they can converge all of their armies on one or two armies at Saratoga, then uh, then we would really no longer be able to, to effectively fight. We'd be so outnumbered that it literally would be a matter of time. Uh, and, and it really is anyway. So that's the plan. Converge on Saratoga. However, uh, they run into some serious problems. Several of their armies are fighting on other fronts and really get delayed by that. Uh, another major army that was supposed to be kind of the linchpin of this entire thing really gets bogged down in, uh, in some rough terrain, rough territory. We, that is our one advantage, right? We know the terrain very well. We understand it. Uh, we know that we can be faster by going way out of our way sometimes. And so that's what we do, right? They get bogged down trying to take a direct approach, uh, and it puts them in some terrain that really slows them down. Uh, what that means is that rather than them outnumbering us and kind of surrounding us, we're actually able to completely surround one of their armies and force it into submission. We actually force a British army to surrender. That is a very, very big deal. In fact, it had never been done in the history uh, of the world at that time, at least not for Great Britain, right? The, uh, there were thousands and thousands of troops that are forced to surrender. And this is a, a major blow to the British. It's a major win for us. Let's take a closer look here. Ultimately, the, the victory, and it was, it was a rousing victory. Uh, it actually accomplished a number of different things, helped us on a number of different levels. First, it, it creates a more level. I'm not going to say a perfectly level, but it creates a more level playing field. Uh, one of the things about America is we always feel like if the, if the playing field is fair, that we always stand a really good chance. Well, now the playing field is fair. Uh, we are still maybe a little bit outnumbered, but not dramatically so. Next, it boosts morale. We really needed a victory. It had been a while since we'd had one. Our troops' morale was very low, and that's dangerous for armies. Next, uh, think about all of those soldiers that we captured. They all had rifles. They all had uh, ammunition. They all had black powder. There was food to provide for them. Uh, there were blankets. There were boots. You name it. There were cannons and cannon shot. So all of the supplies, all of the food, all of the weapons, uh, which our army was in desperate need of, all of a sudden it's like we've been resupplied. And it was a resupply that did not come at our own expense. So our taxpayers didn't have to shoulder the burden of that, which was a really pretty key thing at that point. Now, uh, one of the other things is it also serves as evidence uh, that the colonists can win. So why is that so important? Why, why did we need evidence of that? Well, our boy Benjamin Franklin, right? Uh, this is one of the heavy hitters in early colonial period. Uh, the guy is an inventor. He's a first-class scientific mind. He's an author. He's a publisher. Uh, and ultimately, he's a statesman. He is incredibly well-respected, both here and abroad. 
So he's going to serve as an ambassador for us. Remember the committee that we talked about with the Second Continental Congress, the committee for uh, dealing with other nations? Well, he was on that committee and he serves as the ambassador to France. Uh, we really need France's help. And Benjamin Franklin is a rock star. He's the guy that we send because his name carries more weight. His opinion carries more weight. And he has been trying for a long time to gain the support of the French, right? We want to gain their support in the American Revolution. We want them to recognize us as a sovereign country, and we're trying to get them to support us in this war effort, to maybe provide some troops, to provide some uh, money to help us fight the war. There's any number of ways in which the French could really help out. Franklin has been there. Uh, he's been denied several times, even though the French really want to help. Remember, they just got their tails handed to them in the Seven Years' War or the French-Indian War, and they are reeling. The French hate the British. They would love to see the British humiliated, and being beaten by 13 little colonies would be humiliating around the world for the British. And so the French would love to be a part of that. However, they needed proof. Wars are expensive, and while they wanted to be a part of beating England, uh, they could not afford to get into one that they were going to lose. Their pride would uh, was already stinging from the loss in the, the French-Indian War. So now they need to be guaranteed of a win, as if you can guarantee such things in a time of war. But Benjamin Franklin points to Saratoga. When he gets word, that's the proof that he needs. He says, listen, we've done something that you and all of your wars with, with uh, England have never done. We've done something that nobody in the history of the world has ever done. We captured and forced the surrender of an entire British army. And he goes on and says, basically, listen, we're going to win this war with you or without you. But it would be a lot quicker with you. We prefer for it to be with you. If you are with us, then you get to help claim part of the humiliation of the English. So he really points to Saratoga as proof that it can be done and proof that it will be done given enough time. Uh, so the French really do throw their support behind us. They're going to allow us the use of some of their troops. More importantly, they're going to allow us the use of their navy. We did not have a navy, right? That, so the coast uh, was under the control of the British. Now with the French navy, we can begin to push back a little bit. We can get some naval support. And that's so very important, especially in those coastal cities, right? So uh, ultimately, the fact that it boosts morale and gets us uh, a victory, the fact that uh, it levels the playing field and, and gives us supplies, those are all great things. But the key to Saratoga was the fact that it earned us uh, French support in this war. And because it did that, it serves as the turning point. We often uh, look at kind of the causes of the war, maybe the first battle. We look at the end of the war and the outcome. Uh, but we also look at the the turning points, and that's why we're studying Saratoga right now. This is the turning point of the American Revolution. Uh, it's a big, big deal. We can hang our hat on that. So, guys, I appreciate you watching. Uh, there's more to come, a couple more battles that we're going to discuss, and then we're going to look at the end of the war. So make sure that you subscribe right in here someplace. Watch some of the other videos that are going to appear and uh, and leave any comments. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.